Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get started. Thank you for attending the latest installment of the Option Industry Council's webinar series. My name is Nick Ziegler, and I'm a staff member here at the OIC. I'll be guiding you through today's session. We're glad you could join us to learn more about Options, the flexible, powerful trading tool. In today's webinar, considering butterflies and condors for your option strategies, we'll take a look at these two multi-leg strategies that have both limited risk and limited reward. As always, we'll cover the material as well as your questions in a quick 60-minute session. Our instructor today is the OIC's Director of Retail Education, Mr. Joe Burgoyne. Joe has spent more than three decades in the financial industry and brings a special understanding of options and investments to our discussion. Please note that the windows on your desktop are resizable, so feel free to move the slides around for ease of viewing. At the top right of each box, you'll see buttons to maximize and minimize each window, so please use those, especially on the slides, so you have the best viewing experience. You'll also note that there's a box on the right side of your screen where you're able to submit questions at any point during the presentation. Joe will be responding to those questions during the final 10 or 15 minutes of today's session. Please note that this box is for content-related questions only. If you're having technical issues, the leftmost icon at the bottom, the question mark, is linked to our webcast provider's support page. Just under the questions box, you'll see a survey. Please fill it out at any point during the session so we can better serve you and investors like you with our future webinars. These survey responses are extremely important to us and will help guide our future programming. As I mentioned, there is a row of icons along the bottom of your screen. Each icon corresponds to one of the windows of the webcast, so if you rearrange your workspace and are looking for a specific part of the webcast, you can return to that part by clicking those icons. For your convenience, you can access a PDF version of today's content via a download link that's just below your slide window. And if you'd like to review the entire webinar, an on-demand version will be available a few hours from now via the same link you used to join us today. Additionally, our previous webinars can be viewed on the OIC YouTube channel. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Burgoyne will bring you our topic today, considering butterflies and condors for your options strategies. Joe? Hey, Nick, thanks a lot, and uh, thanks to everybody for joining us. Uh, as we get started here, I mean, here we are, butterflies and condors. I mean, and people wonder why they get confused talking about options. I mean, oftentimes it is a completely different language. Um, so be patient. Uh, it, it's just how it is. And, and one thing I, I'd like to add, um, Nick uh, mentioned the surveys. You know, we do have uh, a handful of questions on the survey. One of them is, what uh, types of strategies would you like discussed in the future? And that's how we came up with today's topic, uh, butterflies and condors. A lot of, uh, you know, you investors and listeners out there have um, all, you know, basically asked us to review the butterflies and condors, so that's what we're going to do today. I have a heck of a lot of slides, and I, I know we have an hour. Um, but that we're really talking about five key points here. And, uh, you know, I guess before we get started, just, you know, so everybody knows, and for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, the industry does have something called the ODD, the Options Disclaimer Document. Uh, it's characteristics and risks of standardized options. If you haven't already gotten that, you should get uh, a copy of that booklet that has really a lot of useful information from either the Options Clearing Corporation or your broker. Um, the, uh, the next slide speaks to uh, who we are, the OIC. And uh, again, for those of you uh, just joining us for the first time, the Options Industry Council is the educational arm of the U.S. listed options industry. Uh, the industry now has 12 option exchanges, as well as uh, in the bottom right, the OCC. That's the clearing corporation that matches every buyer and seller. Um, so th these exchanges have been funding us since 1992 with our initiative, basically to expose investors to the benefits and risks of the listed options product. Here's our uh, industry volume slide going back to the beginning of the industry in 1973 to, you know, uh, last year's close 2014. You can see it's been a heck of a run in terms of options growth really since uh, the year 2000 onward. Um, those numbers on the left-hand side represent billions of contracts. So we're currently doing uh, just over 4 billion contracts on an annualized basis, which amounts to uh, 
somewhere between 16 and 17 million contracts a day. And uh, just so you know, when we started back in 1973, we had 16 companies that had options listed on them. And by the way, when we started back in 1973, there were no puts. There were only calls, believe it or not. And it was uh, about four years before the SEC allowed uh, puts to be listed. Uh, now we've got about 4,200 uh, different underlyings or listings. That's a combination of stocks, indexes, and ETFs. So I was saying, I got a lot of slides today, but I, I figured I, I'd put in a lot of slides because we're going to really you know, hit on five key areas. I'm going to spend some time on spread basics. That, they are really the building blocks, the foundation for spread trading, and in particular, these multi-leg strategies, uh, the butterflies and condors. We'll look at the... Uh, you know how we construct uh, butterflies and condors. Uh, we'll look at long uh, call butterfly and condors, and the iron uh, condor and uh, butterfly as well. But uh, so a lot of similarities, and that's why I thought we'd probably be able to get through uh, far more slides than I typically bring to an hour presentation. So for those of you getting started, uh, a spread is basically where. You're long, you buy one option position and short another, always in the same stock index or ETF. Uh, those spreads are typically all calls or puts, uh, sometimes you know a combination of both. Um, when you do spreads, you have typically two or more positions, and each one of those positions is called a leg. There are... Um, opening transitions on the long side sometimes and closing positions on the short side. There are uh, limits on risk to some of these spreads, depending on the spreads we're talking about. Uh, today's butterflies and condors are limited risk, limited reward spreads. And then um, the last bullet on slide seven here speaks to spreads can be bullish, bearish, or neutral. And I think that's really important because all of us have our favorite stocks or indexes, and really, uh, they can only do one of three things. They can only go up, bullish, go down, bearish, or go sideways, neutral. And um, depending on your forecast for your underlying, you can match option spreads to those forecasts, bullish, bearish, or neutral. Uh, let's see, when we do spreads, we're talking about debits where we pay more for the combination of, of buying and selling options versus the, the net credit spread where we'll take in more. Um, and we'll go through those examples, uh, a number of examples, both the butterflies, the condors, and the iron versions of both. Um, this slide talks about focus on the leg price differential. I think that's a key point because there's so many numbers, especially when you get into these spreads. Try not to focus on the individual numbers themselves, but focus on the net debit or credit for that particular spread. Or, you know, in the flyer of the condor where we're talking uh, three or four different strikes, you know, the net debit or credit as well. Um, there are trade offs. Um, you know, in, in these particular types of strategies, as I said, limited risk, limited reward, and that can be a very, very, very good thing. Uh, time decay, we will speak to uh, in our examples. R really, we'll, we'll look at simple examples of each of the four different types of multi-leg strategies. We'll look at them uh, over time, so we'll take into account this whole idea of time decay. We're going to look at uh, volatilities moving up and moving down, and then the possibility of assignments. So let's start with vertical spreads, okay? Uh, here we've got a picture of a bull vertical spread and a bear vertical spread. You can see, you know, on the bullish side, you make money, you know, when the underlying goes up. To the bear side, you make money, you know, when the underlying goes down. Um, vertical spreads are constructed in the following way. They can be done for net debits or credits. You buy one option. So we're long a leg, and then we sell another option. So we're short a leg. So the vertical spreads, long one option, short another, either calls or puts, always different strike prices, always the same expiration, 
same underlying stock, of course, and always on a one-to-one -one ratio when we're talking about a vertical spread. Okay, always a one-to-one -one ratio. If you change that ratio, you get into a whole different you know, risk profile. So vertical spreads, long one, short another. Uh, limited loss potential, limited profit potential. Um, maximum spread value of one of these vertical spreads, and, and this is an important point, at expiration is the difference between the strike prices. Okay, uh, that's the maximum potential value. So if you've got a 20, 25 call spread, you know, the difference between the strikes would be five points. Maximum value at expiration would be five points. If you paid, let's say, two points for that spread, potentially you can make up to three dollars. Now, the minimum spread value at expiration is zero. That's when both options would be out of the money and therefore have no value. So maximum spread is the difference between the strikes. Maximum spread value. We're not talking about the profit because, you know, it would be the difference between the strikes minus what you paid in terms of your potential profit or loss. And then, you know, the minimum spread value at expiration, as I said, is zero when both strikes are out of the money. So the four basic vertical spreads, you've got the bull call, the bear put, the bear call, and the bull put. And if you can get these straight, you know, that's a good thing. You know, uh, for those of you who've listened before, you know I'm big on fundamentals and core concepts. These are four very straightforward, you know, four core concepts. The bull call spread, moderately bullish. It's a debit spread. In the terminology, it's a long call spread. So the debit spread means you're paying more for the one option you're buying than the option you're selling. The bear call spread is moderately bearish and a credit spread. So you're basically taking in more money for the one option you sell versus the option you buy. And the terminology there is short the call spread. The bear put spread, okay, bear put spread, as you'd think, is bearish. So, you know, moderately bearish. It is also a debit spread, and the terminology is long the put spread. So you're long uh, a put that costs more than the lower price put in terms of strike. That's why it's always a debit. And then the bull put spread, moderately bullish. So you can actually do a put spread that's bullish. But the way you do that is by you know, doing it for you know a credit, always a credit, because you're selling the higher price put, which has more value than the lower price put, which would be uh, of less value than the one you're selling. And the terminology there is short the put spread. Debit spread. Now, debit spread characteristics, okay? That's bull call spreads and bear put spreads. Maximum loss is limited to the debit you pay for that spread. So the bull call and the bear put are both debit spreads. The most you can lose is what you pay. The maximum profit is going to be that difference between the strikes minus the debit you paid. So if the difference is five between the strike you buy and the strike you sell, and both options are in the money at expiration, you've got a $5 spread, you paid two, you made three. If the difference is $10 between those strikes and you paid two, and both options are in the money at expiration, well, you know, that would have been quite a trade, buying it for two and, you know, having it uh, be worth $8 at expiration. So the difference between the strikes minus the debit paid is uh, what we're talking about in terms of our maximum profit for those debit spreads. Um, you know, how you establish them, it's pretty straightforward. Buy a call with a given strike, sell a higher price call. Again, always same expiration, same underlying, and as I mentioned, always a debit because the lower priced call, of course, is going to cost more than the higher price call. Um, you know, that's pretty straightforward. If you're just getting started, that's not going to be so straightforward, but, uh, you know, hang in there with us. The 
pull call spread example, we got XYZ trading at 50 bucks. Okay, you've got the 50, 55 call spread. You can see the prices are 290 on the buy side, 120 on the sell side. But more importantly, that net debit is a dollar 70. So uh, the uh, you know we're long the 50 call, short the 55 call. The terminology would be long the 50, 55 uh, bull call spread for the 170 debit. Maximum profit should be pretty straightforward. The difference between the strikes is five minus the 170 we pay. Uh, the potential is 330 in terms of our maximum profit. Maximum loss, if we were to take this thing all the way to expiration and the stock uh, was below the long strike at expiration, you know, we'd have lost the 170 we paid for the spread. Um, again, if you had an expectation that the underlying was going up and then you changed your opinion, maybe you don't want to, you don't want to wait till expiration. Uh, the spread at that point would be worth something less than 170, but maybe you'd be able to recoup, uh, some of your money instead of watching that thing expire at zero if the long strike was out of the money at expiration. So, uh, you know, here's how it looks graphically. You can see uh, the break-even point is going to be 5170. That's the long strike at 50 plus the debit paid to 170. Gets us our break-even at uh, 5150. And then the line goes horizontal at uh, 55 when the value of the spread maxes out at $5. You know, we're a little more, this is, uh, you know, a little bit more of an advanced uh, idea here uh, versus just basic option fundamentals, but uh, I hope you're with me. Uh, buying one of the uh, 50 calls for 290, selling the 55 for 120. Again, that's that 170 debit, and our break even, as we just showed, is going to be that 5170. Uh, to the downside, we know no matter how low that stock goes, the most we can lose is the debit we paid for the spread. To the upside, uh, at 55, you know, we make 330, and even at 60, it's the same because, as you know, we've uh, bought one call, sold another and uh, you know the maximum value of that spread could be five less the debit we paid uh, let's roll over to the credit spread side so they were the debit spreads where you pay you know for that spread on the credit spread side we're going to take in money and those two spreads are the bear call spread and the bull put spread maximum loss can be the difference between the strikes minus the credit received. Maximum profit, of course, is limited to the net credit received for the spread. Just like is the case with any option that you sell, the most you can make is uh, the credit you sell that option for. Uh, margin may be required, and uh, it may even be a, a greater uh, amount than the credit received for the spread, but you have to check with your broker on that. So to establish the credit spread, and hopefully in your mind, unlike the call spread where the profits were to the upside, you can see the P&L graph, and hopefully when you hear uh, bear call spread, something like that graph may pop into your head. You make money to the downside, you know, you lose money potentially to the upside, and it's always a good idea to have a good idea of um, how much you know, profit potential there is to the downside versus loss to the upside. But how to establish? Buy the call with a given strike, sell a call at a lower, more valuable strike. Same expiration, same underlying. Again, always a credit because we're buying a higher priced call versus uh, the one we sell. Uh, an example, XYZ trading at $73. We sell the 65.75 call spread in our example. So uh, selling the 65 for 940, buying the 75 for 340, taking in a $6 net credit. So real quick, what do you think uh, our maximum profit could be? Uh, maximum profit could potentially be the credit we took in, the $6. Maximum loss, I hope you're with me, it's going to be the difference between those strikes, $10 less the credit we took in, so our maximum loss potential is that $4 or $400. Here's our break even. You know, we've got the 65, 75 strikes. We take that lower strike plus the credit gets us our break even at $71.
And here's just another way to look at that same spread at 71. We've got the break even. Uh, to the upside, again, the forecast was for the underlying to go down. We'd expect if the forecast is wrong to lose money. And above 75, no matter how high the stock may go, uh, we can only lose the difference between the strikes less the credit we took in, which was six. And then to the downside, you can see at $70, we make you know, a dollar because the spread at, at 70 is worth five and we sold it for six. And then as the underlying goes down, uh, we can make up to that maximum profit of uh, $6. So just to uh, a couple more little things on foundation building in terms of the spreads before we talk uh, butterflies and condors. All uh, vertical spreads, they're bullish or bearish, debit or credit. Uh, time decay will have an effect, and that time decay will have more impact depending on whether you are long or short the strike where the underlying is. So that's important. Volatility as well will have an impact, and that's why uh, in our examples we're going to go through uh, different pricing over time with vols up and vols down. So here are the four basic vertical spreads. Again, you've got the bull call debit spread, the bull put credit spread, the bear call credit spread, and the bear put debit spread. And these really are the building blocks for the more advanced strategies we're going to get into now. So let's take a look at the butterfly spread. Um, I don't know who comes up with these names, but... Um, that's this one, and the butterfly is put together with three different option series. And as it says on the slide, always a net debit. So a long butterfly is three option series, always a net debit. Buy one option at a low strike, sell two options in the middle, and then buy an option at a higher strike. And notice the ratio there. You're basically two to two. We're not talking about any kind of ratio, any imbalance of options. We have the same number of options long as we do short. And that's the case with all four examples we're talking about, the butterfly, the condor, the iron butterfly, and the iron condor. All calls or puts, same underlying, same expiration, and same strike increment, another important feature. You don't want one spread to be a differential of five, and in that same butterfly, you know, the top end being a difference of ten. Uh, that's not how your typical butterfly or condor are put together. So uh, the investor's position, you know, the terminology, you know, in, in a butterfly, and uh, it's the terminology that I use as well, you know, those two short options is really the body of the position, and then your two wings are, you know, the lower strike and the higher strike, and I think that's how they come up with the name butterfly for this particular position. Always done for a net debit, and two ways to look at it. Again, those vertical spreads were the building blocks to these more advanced strategies. You can look at it as one bull, uh, excuse me, one bull spread and one bear spread, or one debit spread and one credit spread. Profit potential and loss are both limited with this type of strategy. It's generally a neutral strategy, uh, depending on what strikes you pick. You can move that around a little bit, but typically butterflies are put on with the idea that the stock is going to stay in a particular range. Um, and the, the goal with the butterfly, and this is important, uh, your, your ideal closing price at expiration is that uh, body, that strike that you're short. That's the optimum point uh, for this position at expiration. A few different ways to uh, profit from a butterfly. You can profit from time decay and also decreasing implied volatility. And that's uh, you know a couple ways to profit. Long butterfly at expiration, maximum profit is limited. Again, it's the strike difference minus the net debit paid for the spread. And the maximum uh, 
point of profit is, as I said, when the stock closes right at that short strike. Maximum loss is also limited, as is the case with a lot of long option positions. Uh, the, the most you can lose is the debit you pay for the spread, and you lose that if the underlying is at or below the lowest strike, or if the underlying is at or above the highest strike in your constructed position. Break-even points, and we'll go through some examples. Uh, the downside is the lowest strike plus the net debit paid, and your upside break-even point is going to be that highest strike minus the net debit paid. But going through a couple examples hopefully will help with that. Here's how it looks. I mean, these P&L graphs, again, hopefully you can see them in your mind. Maximum loss, you know, to the downside and the upside flattens out. That's the debit you pay. That maximum profit in the butterfly is going to be that middle strike, that short strike that uh, we're short a couple options. Uh, reasons or, or criteria in terms of choosing the underlying, you, you always want uh, sufficient liquidity. That's the case with, with any instrument you're going to trade. Uh, yeah, you do have to be sure that the accounts are approved at your broker for these higher levels, sometimes considered more complex trades, and uh, that depends really. There are different rules at different firms, so be careful about that. And then margin is always at least the net debit paid in full. Um, sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, a greater margin is, is possible. So that is firm specific. And just uh, make sure you know what your partner, your broker uh, needs. So let's go through a long uh, call butterfly example. In order to establish, you buy the one call with the lower strike, you sell the two mid strikes, and buy the higher out of the money call. So uh, it's, again, a composition using two different call vertical spreads. You've got the bull call spread, which is that debit spread, buying the lower strike call, selling the higher strike call. And then you've got the bear call spread, where you're selling that lower strike call and buying that higher strike call. And there's how it looks. It's a combination of the bull call and the bear call spread. And lo and behold, you put those two together, and that's what we get. We get an optimum profit potential with the stock at that short strike at expiration. Our example, XYZ currently trading $61. Here are your options on the 60-day calls. Okay, we're 60 days out. Stock 61, we've got 55, 60, 65, 70, and $75 calls. We decide we're going to do the 60, basically the 65 fly is the terminology that I use. That means we're going to buy the 60 call, sell two of the 65s, and then buy one of the 70s. As I said earlier, always a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're long two, short two. Net debit for this fly is going to be 95 cents or $95, depending on how you look at it. Now that's 60 days out. Think in your mind, What's the target for the underlying at expiration? We talked about break-evens a little bit earlier. Our downside break-even point is going to be that lowest strike. So that's the 60 strike that we chose, plus the debit paid, 95 cents, gets us a downside break-even of 60.95. To the upside, it's that highest strike at 70 minus the debit we paid. So 6905 is going to be our upside break even. So that's a wide range where you can see between 6095 and 6905 over 60 days to potentially give you the opportunity to profit. Um, maximum profit potential. We hammered this home a number of times through our foundation building with the vertical spreads. It's the strike difference minus the net debit paid. So very simply, it's that $5 difference between the strikes minus the $0.95 cents paid gives us a potential profit, a uh, maximum potential profit of $4.05, quite a risk-reward ratio. Maximum loss, 
can't be more than what we paid for the spread. So the maximum loss is that $0.95 cents or $95. So here's just another way to look at it. There are break-even points that we just talked about, and this is what happens to the price of the individual options as we go along. So there are break-evens. How about in between 60.95 and 69.05? We talked about the sweet spot being right in the middle. Um, and let's, there we go. At 65, our sweet spot is that profit potential of $4.05. Outside of our break-evens, uh, whether the stock's at 70, at 60, or somewhere above or below those levels, our maximum loss is 95 cents. So, you know, that's a core concept. Um, the value of the spread, the maximum value of the spread, is the difference between the strikes minus the debit paid. A butterfly is always a debit. And, you know, the target for that stock at expiration is that strike that you decide to be the body of the butterfly, in this case, 65. So there's how it looks, um, you know, again, in that P&L, in that uh, graph format, uh, something that, as I say, as you progress in your options knowledge, as you can get comfortable seeing those kinds of charts in your head, that's a good thing. So we talked about analyzing these positions over time and with volatility up and down. Here it is over time. The original position was 60 days out. As I think, uh, well, for those of you who have been in the option space, you do know that options decay faster as we get closer to expiration. So it's really those last 30 to 45 days where the decay really starts to accelerate. So we've cut our, our time in half from a 60-day spread to a 30-day spread. Uh, stock, let's see, uh, stock is still at 61, uh, but there are 30 days, not 60 days to expiration. So if we were to close the spread at this point based on our example, uh, we would be having to sell the 265 calls because we're, excuse me, we'd have to buy them back because we were short them originally. We'd have to buy back the two uh, XYZ 65 calls and then sell the 60 and 70 call. And if we did that at the current prices, you know, 30 days after we put this on, according to the example, um, we would be able to take in a dollar twenty credit, which um, would give us a small profit uh, because initially we did this thing for a ninety-five cent debit. Um, at this point, we're able to take in a dollar twenty, so that would afford us a twenty-five cent or twenty-five dollar profit over time. Now, if we look at uh, the same position, 30 days out, with volatility going up, um, the example shows that the net credit is, a, is actually a dollar. So it still shows that we, in this example, would make a small amount of money after commissions. It'd probably be gone. But um, you can see that we went from 60 to 30 days. But because the premiums expanded, because implied volatility went up from 35 to 45%, we really didn't benefit from the time decay. And uh, the stock hadn't moved. So you know, we we're fortunate enough to basically uh, make just a little bit of money being wrong on the implied volatility. And if we look at it the other way around, with the implieds down, again, 30 days to expiration, implied vol going from 35 to 25, you can see there's a far more significant profit where um, if we turn around and have to unwind the spread, sell the 265, excuse me, buy the 265s and sell the 60 and 70 call, we'd be able to take in a dollar forty credit minus the 95 cents we paid originally, you know, for a profit of, uh, what's that, about 50% over 30 days, uh, $45. Um, one other area that we'll talk about with these examples is the possibility of early assignment. For the, those of you getting started, assignment is the obligation you incur when you sell options. So um, if 
the option was if you in our example if you're short calls that are now in the money without time premium that would suggest that you know the stock had moved quite a bit uh early assignment meaning you having uh, the obligation to potentially sell the stock if assigned um that could happen possibly uh just before an ex dividend date or because of the amount that the call was in the money so if you're going to expect the possibility of early assignment either uh, just before expiration or when a dividend amount is greater than the short call time value you may want to consider closing the spread to avoid early assignment because if you get assigned you're going to have you know a position that's a little bit of a haphazard you're going to be short some stock long some calls and that may just be something that you know you, you certainly that's not why you put on the position in the first place so to avoid that situation you may just close the spread uh butterflies in general basically uh behavior you can profit and lose um much the same way whether it's a call or a put butterfly uh risk reward is limited essentially uh you know you can lose the debit you pay and make the difference between the strikes minus your debit uh when all options expire worthless obviously the position uh will go out with no value and you'll have lost uh the debit you paid and um as we spent a fair amount of time talking about the vertical spreads they are the building blocks for this type of position let's do a quick look at an iron butterfly before we get into the condors uh we'll see the difference between a regular butterfly and the iron butterfly uh to establish the iron butterfly basically we're going to buy one put with a low strike and sell one put with a middle area strike. We're also going to sell a call with a middle area strike and buy an out of the money call with a higher strike. So, we're essentially again putting together two put spreads here. Uh and there are really two ways to look at it. A bull put spread that you do for a credit, bull put spreads are always a credit, plus the bear call spread, which is also always a credit. I actually like to look at these uh you know the way the next bullet describes them short straddle uh which is of course a credit plus a long strangle so the straddle you're short typically the at the money call and put and then the long straddle uh gives you the long out of the money call and out of the money put so the spread though the iron butterfly is always established for a net credit and you know be aware of the margin requirement and just do make sure that uh if you're going to get into these multi-leg strategies you've talked to your broker make sure you're approved for these types of trades and away you go so the iron butterfly here we are uh it's constructed again with calls and puts um with that one sweet spot uh being the best uh best point for the stock at expiration in terms of your profit potential. Quick example with XYZ currently it's $70. Okay, if we're going to talk about a, an iron butterfly, uh, we're going to buy a 60 put and these are again 60 day options. We buy a 60 put, sell a 70 put, sell the 70 call and buy the 80 call so that's the put spread and the call spread combined and as we said these are always done for a credit net credit in this example is $6.25 and um that's that's this particular example uh in terms of our break even our downside break even points and i think you really have to go through a number of these to get it straight you know what strike are you adding or subtracting to but uh as nick said our our particular uh, webinars are always uh, available right after uh, we give them so you can always uh, go back to the on demand and and review them if if you think that'll help and i know for me just keeping things straight uh typically i do have to go back and review them uh, a couple times because there are a lot of strikes and a lot of debits and credits and just getting it straight especially when you're getting started you know can be a challenge 
So our break even to the downside is that middle strike minus the net credit received. Okay, so we're talking the middle strike here. We're within the butterfly. We were talking, you know, the highest and the lowest strikes. That's why I think going back and reviewing these things is important. So the downside break even is that middle strike minus the net credit received. The upside break even is that middle strike plus the net credit received. You know, gives us a range of 63.75 versus 76 and a quarter. Um, maximum profit. Again, this core concept, difference in strikes, whether it's a debit or a credit. You know, in our example here, we're, we've got ten dollar differential we've taken in six and a quarter so clearly uh, if we're wrong in our forecast we can lose up to three hundred and seventy five dollars for each of the spreads we put on and again there's uh, just a different way to look at it that sweet spot being that short straddle with uh, in this example the 70 strike butterfly comparisons calls or puts versus iron key differences you know, with the call and put butterfly, always debit spreads. Uh, the iron butterfly, always a credit spread. Different uh, profit potentials with the two of them. And, you know, at expiration, the maximum profit will occur with the underlying closing exactly at the middle strike. Um, you know, that's a challenge I, to uh, be able to forecast exactly where that stock's going to be at expiration. But, you know, um, it's not to say that you put it on for 95 cents and you have to make $4.05. You know, in the range, as you get to expiration, can return uh, a very nice percentage for you if you're uh, correct in your forecast. That last comment on uh, this slide, at expiration, pin risk is always a concern. And pin risk means our optimal target for the stock is that short strike. But unless we close it down, if the stock went right out at that short strike, you're short the call and short the put, you may have the obligation to deliver short stock or buy long stock, depending on whether or not you were assigned from the call owner or the put owner. So uh, bear in mind, you may have to or it may be in your best interest to uh, close down that position at the strike at expiration. Let's roll over to Condors and go through them before we get to uh, questions with Nick. A uh, little bit different here, uh, but a lot of the same concepts. Big difference out of the box, four strikes with a long condor versus three with a butterfly, always a net debit, always calls or puts, same underlying, same expiration, same strike, and you know this important concept of one to one to one to one ratio. Okay, don't get away from that if you're doing one of these spreads. Same terminology, we got bodies and wings uh, with a long condor. Uh, the investor is always paying a net debit. Again, the construction is two vertical spreads, one bull spread and one bear spread. It can be also termed one debit spread and one credit spread. Just like with the flies, profit potential and loss is limited in both. Again, thought of as a neutral strategy. Expectation for the underlying, a little bit different. And that's, that's the nuance here between the butterfly and the condor. Rather than that one strike uh, being the targeted expiration, with the condor, we're looking for the stock to close within a range at expiration. That's the difference. And of course, that range will be uh, dependent upon what strikes we pick. The investor's uh, motivations, similar to the butterfly, you can profit from time decay and also from decreasing implied volatility. Uh, essentially, both positions are trying to uh, take some money out of the market through, uh, you know, as we said, time decay and maybe shrinking implied volatility. And investors can do that with short options too, but this this is all about managing risk. And as that last bullet says, the investors unwilling to accept the risk of a short straddle or strangle or just a short call or short put. Don't forget, um, 
it's not necessarily unlimited, but very substantial risk with those short option positions. The beauty of the spreads, and in particular these vertical spreads, is that you know we have limited risk. Yes, there's limited reward, but it's a very managed situation, and oftentimes it's a managed situation with a very, very good risk-reward ratio. Um, with the long condor at expiration, you know, the maximum profit is limited. We've talked about very similar to the butterfly strike uh, increment differential minus the debit paid. Uh, we've gone through that break even points a little different. Again, I think it takes some repetition. Uh, that downside break even is the low strike plus the net debit paid. The upside break even is that highest strike minus the net debit paid. Here's the big difference, okay? We talked about at expiration maximum profit being across a range of prices, and that's the difference between Condor and Butterfly. Butterfly is targeting a very specific uh, stock underlying price, where with the Condor, it's a wider range because of the construction. Uh, criteria very similar. Obviously, we want... Um, you know, sufficient liquidity. You know, we talk about maybe some higher price stocks uh, because they're more available strikes. Uh, requirements for trading a condor are the same as the butterfly. You must have your account approved. Uh, make sure you have the required equity amounts. Again, know what the rules for your firm are and, uh, you know, just be aware of what margin requirements they'll be. So let's go through our long call condor example, uh, similar to the butterfly in a lot of ways. Uh, we're going to buy one call at a lower strike, sell a call with a higher strike, sell another call with a higher strike, and buy the highest strike call. So again, two vertical call spreads, a bull call spread, which is that debit spread, combined with the bear call spread and credit spread. Here's how those two spreads look, and then they come together this way with the condor. Again, there's a range uh, that is put together through uh, the two short calls at different strikes. That's the difference, at different strikes. Uh, let's look at our 60-day example. Lots of uh, different strikes. We've got an $82 underlying. And we're going to take a look at the 7580, 8590 uh, Condor. So uh, we can put that combination on where we buy the 75 and 90. We buy those outside wings and sell, you know, more of the body with the 80 and the 85 calls. We're able to do that for a net debit of $1.50. Um, our break-evens, just to review, it's that lowest strike plus the debit paid for our downside break-even, and the upside is going to be that highest strike, the 90 strike, minus the debit paid, is uh, giving us a range then between 76.50 and 88.50, quite a wide range. Maximum profit, we've gone over any number of times. The difference between our strikes in this example is the five minus the dollar fifty paid gives us a profit potential of uh let's see, you know, two and a half to one at three hundred and fifty dollars. Maximum loss as we know. If we held this thing all the way to expiration and we were outside of our break even points, uh maximum loss would be that one fifty. Again, any option position you put on. If your opinions change, you can turn and get out of that position. Uh, here's just a different way to look at it. There are break-even points in the value of the individual options at expiration. We've then got uh, you know, the underlying going against us outside of that range over the 60-day period. We know the debit for the spread was $1.50. That's the most we could uh, lose. And then inside of that range, we've got those various profit potentials. So uh, you can see at 87 and 78, uh, we get to make a dollar and a half, and then even more so as we get inside of that specific uh, two strikes that were short.
the 80 and 85. And that's how it looks on the graph. As we move uh, over time, I said uh, we go through these examples. You can see we're down to the 30-day uh, period at this point. Originally, we put this on for $1.50 debit. If 30 days went away, according to our example, we'd be able to unwind. We'd have to buy back the 80 and 85 calls, sell the 75 and 90 call. Uh, according to the example, we'd be able to take in $2.20 credit there for a net profit uh, after the debit we paid of $170 of $70 over uh, 30 days in this example. Now with vols up, again, 30 days, stock's still 82, vols go from 35 to 45, that's working against us. Uh, we still had an opportunity, it looks like, to make some profit in this example, but certainly uh, with vols either lower or staying the same, we're going to do better because, you know, just conceptually from a common sense point of view, those at-the-money options or, or close to at-the-money are the options with the most amount of time premium. And they're the options that were short in these different butterfly and condor positions. So as the implied volatility, you know, the amount of premium in those options expands, if we're already short them, that's going to work against us. Fortunately, the combination of time decay um, in our examples has been able to offset the increase in implied volatility. But uh, the two things that we really want working for us, ideally, are time and then um, a decrease in implied volatility is going to make our profits even greater. And of course, at the same time, we've targeted a specific range for the stock, and we can't forget that. So if we just uh, take a look at this condor with the implieds down, uh, it makes sense that 30 days have gone away, plus the time premium has shrunk um, even greater because of a decrease in the implieds, and we're looking at a... Uh, What's that $145 gain where uh, we'd be able to take this thing off for a 295 credit? We landed up uh, paying 150 initially, so uh, you know almost doubling our money still with 30 days to go to expiration. Again, early assignment for dividends. Just be aware if you are in the money and any of those call premiums are smaller then the dividend to be paid, you can expect to be assigned. And the way you avoid that is to just close down your position. So know, you know, know the situation with your dividends uh, before you put these positions on. And um, you know, it may keep you out of something that you need to close down somewhat unexpectedly. Uh, you know, putting cold condors, you know, Really doesn't matter whether you're doing a call or a put one. Uh, same risk reward profiles. Uh, unless all options expire worthless, just like is the case with the butterflies, uh, there's a very good chance that you will have to manage that position at expiration. You know, in order for those options to all go out worthless, that would have meant that the stock would have to have moved an awful lot. Um, so chances are you'll have uh, between your strikes some options of value, and that will mean managing that position at expiration. Um, lastly, the iron condor. Um, let's go through that. Um, in order for uh, the iron condor to be put on, we basically uh, trade puts and calls. We buy a put at a lower strike. And again, sell more of a meaty, higher strike put. We sell a call with a higher strike and then buy a call that's even higher than the one that we've already sold. So again, a um, couple ways to look at it. A bull put spread, and a bull put spread would be a credit, or, or and in conjunction with the bear call spread, which is also a credit. You know, my personal uh, preference is, you know, to look at it from a short strangle, uh, an inside short strangle, and then long the outside or wider strangle. So short the credit, long the debit. Um, and these iron condors, just like the iron flies, always done for a net credit. 
Uh, we'll take a look at our example. You've seen uh, the bull and the put. Bring them together, and there we are. Um, you know, the combination, that, that range based on the short put and short call that we've uh, put on with this, with this particular trade. Our example, we've got stock at 63. Uh, strike price differentials are five dollars. We decide we're going to do the 60, 65, 70, 75 condor, iron condor, and the pricing allows us to do it 60 days out for a three dollar credit. As we uh, look at our break even points, uh, the downside break even is going to be that short strike minus the net credit received. Upside is going to be the short call strike plus the net credit received. So in this particular strategy uh, with the stock 66, we're looking at a 62.73 range when we put this thing on for a $3 credit. Maximum profit can't be greater than the premium we take in, which is the $3. Maximum loss is going to be the difference in the strike less the credit we took in, which is 3 Difference in the strikes is 5 so our maximum loss is going to be $2. And there's how it looks. Again, uh, if you can visualize the butterfly versus the condor, um, you know, butterfly is looking at that one price point where the condor is looking at a, a wider range. Just to compare the two, um, the call and put condors are always debit spreads. The iron condor is going to be a credit spread. At expiration, the maximum profit will occur with the underlying closing at or between those two middle strikes. And again, we talked about the pin risk possibility. Uh, be aware of that, um, and that may force you to close it down at expiration. Oftentimes a very good idea anyway. Um, the iron butterfly at expiration versus the iron condor, um, there's some you know, different things to look at, but uh, as I said, that maximum profit is that single strike price with the butterfly versus a range with the condor. And I think, Nick, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, butterflies and condors essentially are neutral strategies, but it, it, it really does depend on the strikes you pick. Um, there are limited loss, limited reward potential in both these strategies. And we're really trying to take some premium out of the market by you know selling options that have more value than the options uh, that we're buying. That's really the gist of these uh, strategies. So I hope that wasn't too much for everybody. We got maybe a couple minutes for questions. And as always, uh, we can be reached at optionseducation.org, just a great website with all kinds of resources and our investor services team. Six strong, five days a week there for you at 888 Options. So, Nick, what do we have? Well, Joe, we do have a few questions today, uh, but before we get to them, I want to remind our listeners that today's session is going to be archived and will be accessible in just a few hours using the same link that they used to join us today. Additionally, our past webinars are available on the OIC YouTube channel, so you can go ahead and review those sessions at your own pace. Um, if we are not able to get to your questions today, and we do have a number of them, um, or you have further questions about anything on the optionseducation.org website, as Joe mentioned, call our investor services team at 1-888-OPTIONS. They're always ready to help answer questions about option strategies or positions. And Joe, the first question that we had uh, came in a number of times, but towards the beginning of our session today. And this investor wanted to know if he or she is bullish on a company, why would you go with one of these uh, these spread strategies rather than just buying a call? Well, uh, Nick, uh, I like that question. Um, buying a call, okay, we're bullish, so you buy a call versus a spread strategy. Um, when you buy a call, obviously you know what you can lose with that call. Um, you know, only whatever you pay for the for that option. The idea with the spreads is really to you, you've got a little bit of a built-in hedge against uh, the the long option because obviously with a spread, you know, whether it's a butterfly, a condor, or a vertical spread, you've bought one option and sold another. And when we've done that, and I hope uh, our listeners, you know, 
we're, we're taking in the whole idea. You always have a plan. You always have a target. With the butterflies, the target is that one short strike. Um, with the condor, it's that range, depending on what uh, call and what put you sold. Um, with the so there, there's a very specific target in terms of doing the spread, and there's typically less risk um, because again, you've you've paid a debit for the long call, but then you've taken in a credit to kind of hedge that long call a little bit. You don't have that same hedge when you just buy a call. I mean, you buy the call, you hope it goes up. If it doesn't, um, obviously you're going to lose money. So that's the idea. Um, you know, risk reward and, um, you know, this isn't really the time for it, but I, I know one of our presentations, I, I think we had a webinar on it, was about the vertical spreads and how oftentimes um, the risk reward ratio is better for the vertical spread than just the long call in terms of the amount of risk, the actual money you have to put up, and your percentage return if the stock goes to that short strike. Joe, earlier on in the session, I think one of your examples, you mentioned implied volatility going up from 35 to 45, and this investor wanted to know how do you arrive at one specific figure of IV when there are three strikes that each might have different implied volatility? Ah, love that question. You know, and for those of you who uh, listen to the webinars, you know I'm an implied vol guy. There will always be different implieds uh, for different strikes, and, and I guess I shouldn't say always, but almost always, and that's because of natural market skew. Uh, as the calls get out of the money, the implied vols get a little lower. As the puts get out of the money, the implies get a little bit higher. So you have to just basically uh, generalize those vol levels, but the ones really to concentrate on are the short vol. The, the short strikes and you know in the condor you got a couple different uh, strike prices so you know to me and this is how when I was on the floor uh, trading you know it wasn't to me about you know an implied vol of 28.7 percent versus one at 29.2 I wasn't that precise you know I'd basically want to know okay my short vols um, or, you know, 29%, maybe my long vols are a little lower than that, and just have a, a general idea. I wouldn't get too worried about being too, too specific. Uh, but, but the important thing is to understand, you know, we're selling at the money options or something closer to at the money. They're the ones we're selling. So if implieds go up, those premiums, because the at the monies always have the most amount of premium, uh, that position is going to go against you uh, versus the implieds going down. So just you know, keep that core concept in mind. Joe, can the short positions in condors expire earlier than the long positions? Uh, no. Can they expire earlier? Um, expiration is always the same uh, month or week whenever you're doing these positions. So, no, expiration will be the same uh, for the long and shorts. Um, now, depending on where the underlying closes, those options may or may not have value, uh, but expiration will always, always be the same. If it's not, you don't have on a butterfly or a condor. Joe, are any of these four vertical spreads that you mentioned today, are any of them cheaper or more expensive than the other comparatively? Um, well, I, I, I think really the answer to that is no. And, and the question is, you know, is it better to do a bull call spread, uh, buying a bull call spread versus selling a bear call spread? The markets in this day and age are really a f very, very, very efficient. You know, the vast majority of the time, when things get out of line, they don't stay there very long. You know, we have our put-call parity relationships with the underlying that keep things in line. As we all know, there are a lot of computers involved in the market in this day and age. So in the old days, I'd say, you know, there were some imbalances, but very, very rarely now, Nick. And, and you know things uh, get back in the line, I think, far quicker than uh, the typical investor would be able to take advantage of. 
Great. Thanks so much, Joe. Unfortunately, we are over our 60-minute time frame for today. So, Joe, do you have any final closing thoughts for our listeners? No, Nick, I hope uh, I hope it wasn't too much today. I hit on a lot, um, but again, uh, folks can go back to ON24 and listen again. And you know, just uh, we'll look forward to your survey comments uh, after today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, as Joe said, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. And I know we were not able to get to all of your questions, but as I mentioned, please call our investor services desk. They're ready to help, and they can be reached at 1-888-OPTIONS. They're available during most business hours to answer your questions on options. Again, today's session will be archived and should be accessible in a few hours with the same link you used to join us today. And the OIC YouTube channel is ready for you to review our previous webinars beginning from 2014 on. Of course, make sure to check optionseducation.org in the upcoming weeks for our upcoming 2015 session. And our next webinar will be held on May 12th. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for attending, and we hope to see you again next time.